Hello everyone and welcome to a wonderful game. Uh, this one is from round one of the Super United Rapid and Blitz tournament in, uh, being played in Croatia. It's Alresa Firuja versus Ivan Sharic, uh, one of the few players that actually has a positive score against Magnus Carlsen in classical chess, beating him uh, in the 2014 Tromso Olympiad and getting a draw in the 2015 Tata, uh, Tata Steel Masters edition. Uh, and also he's a uh, part of uh, Magnus's team. So he's a very unpleasant opponent and it's um, yeah, very interesting what... Uh, um, uh, well, what uh, Alireza decides to play against him. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. The action in this game uh, happens way into the end game, uh, but we're gonna, you know, pretty much fly uh, over there right away. So Alireza has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have pawn to c5, uh, even pretty much always plays the Sicilian defense against e4. Knight to, e knight to f3, d6, and now knight to c3. Uh, it's uh, very interesting that Alireza avoids the open Sicilian as he is also uh, really really uh, sharp and uh, can play pretty much anything but I, I think as because um, even is just so so well known for his uh, great skills in the Sicilian he decides to mix it up a bit and he employs a very very rare line so knight to f6 and now h3 uh, h3 being the eighth most popular reply to knight to f6 uh, but it's still not a new position we have pawn to e5 taking control over the d4 square bishop to c4 and now bishop to e7 preparing to castle uh, we have d3 and here even castles and now uh, there are a couple of um, games that reach this position but i would play moves like bishop to e3 bishop g5 a4 uh, but here alireza plays knight to h2 and it is now as of move 7 that we have a completely new game so quite quite interesting uh moving the knight over to g4 uh, trying to trade off some of the uh some of the pieces so here we have knight to c6 even continuous development Knight to g4 and now bishop to e6, offering a trade of white square bishops. Knight to e3. Now, if the bishops get traded off, he can uh, uh, put a knight on c4. Uh, and now knight to d4. Uh, we have castles uh, by white and now uh, rook to b8, preparing to push the pawn to b5. So a4, preventing this, and now a6. We have knight c to d5. Uh, a very nice uh, square for the knight and now a uh, pawn to b5 finally advancing that pawn we have captures captures and knight captures on f6 bishop captures and bishop to d5 saying that if you capture here i'm gonna play knight captures on d5 and have a monster knight here for a very very long time uh, so even uh, continues with b4 uh, he doesn't want to see c3 on the board uh, but of course that's exactly what alireza will play uh, at least now Ivan will get a, a b file for his rook so c3 b captures b captures and the knight goes to b3 now attacks the rook and the bishop so uh here we have bishop captures on e6 a nice in between move f captures and rook to b1 a nice capture fest happening here knight captures on c1 queen captures and now bishop to g5 pinning the knight here uh, we have rook to e1 and now comes queen to f6 putting pressure on f2 now that the rook uh, uh, left the f1 square and now rook to b2 so you don't have to worry if the if the rook captures queen will capture and the queen will guard the f2 pawn we have h6 and now queen to c2 uh, we have bishop captures on e3, even trades off the bishop for knight, rook captures and rook captures on b2. Queen captures and now queen to h4, again just putting pressure on the f2 pawn. And this is pretty much um, uh, very, very drawish, uh, even uh, very nicely neutralized Alireza's threats. We have rook back to e1 and now king to h7. Uh, we have queen to e2. Uh, and now rook to f6. We have rook to a1 and now queen to f4. So just keeping the, the position very solid, not doing anything crazy. c4, grabbing a little more space in the center here and rook to f7, not allowing rook to a7. Uh, it doesn't do all that much, but still uh, no reason to allow it. g3, pushing the queen back and now queen to f3, offering a queen trade. And there is really no good way to continue uh, other than going into a rook endgame. So that's what Alireza does. We have queen captures rook captures and this is only move 31 uh, but uh, alireza does not want to squander the white pieces he will he will try and push this we have rook to a3 uh, defending the pawn uh, it's equal material rook end game uh, but the the one thing that alireza has going for him is that even has a doubled e pawn so maybe he can use that to his advantage e, uh, doubled pawns are very easy targets for the rook so king to g6 we have king to g2 attacking the rook rook f7 and now rook to a6 going after the pawn here rook to d6 
defending and king to f3, activating the king. King f6, now comes king to g4. Uh, we have g6, cutting off the white king, h4, and now pawn to h5, pushing back all it is as king, king to f3, and king to e7. Uh, we have g4, h captures, king captures, and now king to f6. So again, this is a dead draw, uh, but still, there no reason to call it a draw just yet. Uh, we have rook to b6, and now we have rook to d8, rook to b7, and rook to a8 now. Uh, even shows that uh, he's uh, also interested in, in continuing this game. We have rook to d7, now going after this pawn, and rook to a6 defending it. We have king to f3, uh, rook to b6, and now king to e3. Rook to a6, uh, waiting to see what Alereza will do. We have f3, rook to b6, and now king to d2. Uh, rook to b2 with check, and now king to c3, allowing the rook to go after the king side pawns. Rook to f2, and now finally rook captures on d6. Rook captures on f3, now rook c6 going after this pawn, and rook to h3 going after the h pawn. We have rook captures on c5, rook captures on h4, and rook to c8. So again, not all that much has changed in the position, we are just getting closer to a draw. Uh, or so you would think. We have g5, uh, even starts pushing his pass pawn, and rook to g8 now, putting the rook behind the pass pawn. We have rook to h1, and now pawn to c5. Alireza will now also start pushing his pass pawn, so even wants to be able to deliver some checks from behind. Uh, rook to g1, we have king to b4, and now king to f7, kicking the rook away from the g file. Rook to h8, and rook to c1 now, not allowing further advancement of the pawn, so king to b5. Rook to c3 going after the d3 pawn and now pawn to c6. Uh, we have king to e7, now comes rook to h7 check, king to d8 and rook to d7 with check. Uh, also now defending the d3 pawn, king to c8 and rook to d6, putting pressure on the e6 pawn and now even starts advancing the g pawn. We have pawn to g4, uh, rook captures on e6, and now we have uh, rook captures on d3. Rook captures on e5, Alireza is now up a pawn, uh, but uh, uh, should not be a problem. It's a very, very often that um, a rook endgame will be a draw, even if you are down a pawn, if your uh, king is, is well positioned, and here Ivan's king is very well positioned. However, you have to continue the game uh, properly, and Ivan was very low on time here. Uh, he pushed the pawn to g3, and now the position is completely winning for Alireza. Just to give you uh, an idea why this is so, uh, you can play a move like rook to e3, uh, making it impossible for Alireza to move his rook to attack the pawn, uh, uh, otherwise you're going to capture this pawn. Uh, so so uh, rook to e3 is one of the moves you can play. You could also play rook to d1, this makes sense, because if rook to g5 going after the pawn, you can now play rook to g1, and now you will be able to advance your pawn all the way, and then you will have the uh, well-known trick of, of delivering a check, and then promoting your pawn to a queen if of course white allows it so the game might continue something like e5 g3 e6 g2 rook to g8 check and now king to c7 where we would either see, uh, either see a repetition uh, with checks or rook to g7 check king to c8 e7 if white wanted to push this rook to b1 with check king to c5 and now you will just have to continue checking the white king uh, rook to c1 with check if um, uh, if uh, of course uh, you are given one move then Maybe you can promote this pawn to a queen, but not really, as you also have to be very, very careful of e8 check, and also the rook is guarding the g1 square. So probably king d5, rook d1 check, king c5, and we will just be repeating this. So that's the other way to play this. Uh, but uh, one thing you cannot do is the move that even played, and that is pawn to g3. And of course, even knows this, but uh, it was very low on time, uh, and he allowed Alireza to now take uh, advantage of the position, and Alireza does. He plays rook to g5, and this is the only way to win the game. Uh, we have rook to e3, now going after the pawn, but now king to b6. Now all of the squares are covered in front of the in front of the black king, and we are threatening checkmate. So you have to do something about this. Rook to b3 check, king c5, and rook to c3 with check. We have king to d5, rook to d3 check, king to c4. Now uh, no more checks. We have rook to a3, and now how do you win this game? Uh, feel free to show us your endgame prowess by pausing the video and winning this game for Alireza while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you who were able to do this, uh, congratulations on being a true master of the end game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to G7. We cut off the Black King from going after the pawn here, and now uh, there is just uh, nothing Black can do. Uh, if uh, even moves the Rook uh, from the third rank, then we're just going to play Rook Captress and G3. And if he doesn't, uh, there is really not uh, well. Well, there's really not much to do aside from from doing that. If you try uh, going after the pawn, we just uh, defend with the king if you go back rook to a3 we start advancing this pawn this pawn this pawn and there's really no move for black to make so instead rook to a1 was played uh, even gave up the pawn right away we have rook captures on g3 and now king to c7 this way at least you can activate your king from the back rank rook to g6 and now rook to c1 with check king d5 we have rook to d1 check king to e5 rook to e1 and now rook to e6 uh, rook to h1 King to f6, now trying to uh, uh, further advance the pawn, and you want this rook to, uh, to, to defend the c6 pawn. Rook to h6 check, king to f7, and now rook back to h4. Point is, if you trade pawns, captures, captures, and king captures on c6, uh, of course the king is on e6, this is a well-known winning position. e5, if you move the king just here, the king controls all of the squares, you just push the pawn and win the game. So after king f7, rook to h4 was played, now comes pawn to e5. We have rook to e4. Four. King to f6, rook to f4, check king to g5, and now rook back to f1, uh, allowing white to move. So rook to d6, and now rook to f2. Uh, we have king to g6, rook to f1, and now rook to d2. Uh, we have rook to e1, uh, attacking the pawn, and now king to f6. Rook to f1, check king to e6 and rook to h1 now trying to deliver some side checks uh, but just rook to c2 we have to defend this pawn rook to h6 with check and king to f7 and now again you can capture the pawn but it doesn't matter if you trade of course the pass pawn is again winning it's the exact same position or uh, rather a very similar one so rook h7 check we have king to g6 rook h1 again uh, alireza wins a move pawn to e6 rook to g1 with check king to f7 rook f1 check and king to e8 we have rook to e1 and now pawn to e7 uh, so very little to do rook to f1 uh, the king uh, seems to be cut off but now uh, of course we just uh, counter that rook to h2 rook f3 now comes rook to d2 now we're gonna go for this check rook to f1 and rook to d7 with check king c8 we have pawn to c7 and now uh, there is no defense uh, uh, against rook to d8 check uh, rook to h1 was played but just rook to d8 with check king captures on c7 and now king f7 and he was in this position on move 97 Seven, that even Sharic resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh, once uh, uh, you give this check rook f1 check king g6 now you either continue checking the white king and we zigzag our way over to the to the black rook or you put the rook behind the pawn but it doesn't matter uh, we just bring a queen into the game and now this will of course be winning uh, as um, uh, rook and king always beat a king uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Ali Reza. He, in the second round, he got a draw against Yanni Pomnishi, and in the third round, he defeated Veselin Topolov. Uh, basically just crushed him. It was, it, it was so crushing that I decided not even to show the game. It was uh, so, so scary. Uh, but yeah, yeah, here are the standings uh, after the third round. So Ali Reza is leading as he's the only player that got two wins um, in the first three rounds. Then Magnus Carlsen, uh, Wesley So, uh, Maxim Vachel, Grav, Jordan Van Forest, and Shak. Uh, in your Favores with four points, uh, Shakir Mamedara with three, Yanni Pomnishi and Linear Dominguez uh, with uh, two, uh, also uh, even charged with two, and the Veselin Topalov with zero points. He lost all three of his games, uh, so hopefully it will, uh, you know, uh, get better for him in, in, in further rounds. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So here you can see that uh, even though Ivan uh, pretty much uh, uh, neutralized Alireza straight out of the opening, there wasn't really all that much to play with. The only thing Alireza had going for him was the doubled pawn, maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, he just played much faster, even uh, dropped on time, and that was enough uh, for uh, Ivan to, uh, to make the, the, the mistake in this crucial position where he pushed the pawn to g3 uh, too, too early. So you can never uh, learn enough uh, of the rook end games. It's simply an area that you, you can uh, learn forever, and you will never be a master of it. You, you will always be surprised, and you will always uh, you know find positions that you can't solve. Uh, and uh, 
by you cancel I mean when you are very low on time so yeah, uh, study the end game it is the most important um, uh, part of chess some would say the end game uh, is chess uh, so yeah once again really hope you enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank John Austin Michael Higgins Dominic Alvers uh, Gordon Mercer and Sanko Solo for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until this finishes so thank you all I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day